Hi everyone! So today I wanted to do a quick haul video with you because essentially I will swatch these out and I also will do a flip through for this book because I put a picture on Instagram and I had it already had uh, a request to do a flip through but I was planning to do it anyhow. I'll get to that in a second. What else I wanted to share with you is actually I tried something new with my light because um, it's actually not that late. It's not even half past two, but the clouds have gone in. It's gone really dark and it looks like it's going to start raining any minute now. And obviously I need to film. So what I decided to do um, as, I, as I usually do with my lighting, because I know some of you are interested, I would point it up to the ceiling so that it would diffuse a softer light. That way it wouldn't be as kind of bright and harsh. And also it wasn't uh, painful for me uh, to look at. Uh, however, today is so dark that that wasn't enough. And so I decided to do some DIYing and I created a little shield which I thought um, it might be useful for some of you in case you have the same issue. So basically you'll need some tracing paper and some tape. Um, I'm using this blue painter's tape because I bought it for painting in um, sketchbooks. I saw someone use it but somehow it doesn't work when I do it, um, it kind of rips the paper. But anyways, it's it's a good tape because I feel like it's not going to leave like a sticky residue behind on, on the light, which I really don't like. But um, yeah, so what I've done is I cut two sheets of um, tracing paper because one is not enough, one is still too bright. So when I layered them, obviously this is just an example I'm showing, when I layered them together I basically adhered the uh, tape on each side like that and I stuck it onto the light which makes it perfect and diffused and it, it makes it very bright still but at least it's not hurting my eyes in any way and I've got lovely bright space here which I can see uh you know shows the colors in in its true nature so if you um, want to try and doing it with your studio lights that are super bright then try this little trick I just discovered and see if it helps you okay so um, back to the hole and I received this package today all the way from US because I think yeah I couldn't find this particular set. It was sold as a set of four. So I couldn't find it here in um, in UK. And I still had a gift card that I wanted to use up. So that's what I've done. I got four colors here, which is... Let me just put them in order like that. So it's the yellow uh, fossilized amber. Then it's an orange called spiced marmalade. Pink worn lipstick and a red called fired brick now i believe i have all of these colors except for this one i think in the distress inks let me just quickly check and yes i don't have fossilized amber um i do have spiced marmalade which is this one here so i'll actually pull it out so i can show you worn lipstick is this one and i can tell you already i prefer worn lipstick um in the oxide there is the distress oxide fired brick oh actually i don't have this one i have a barn door no that's i don't have this one okay so i've got these two to to show you and i will do swatches um in a separate video and play around with they have become my favorite art supplies in a very very quick and short time literally since i just tried them so uh fossilized umber looks like this it doesn't look too great uh, to begin with actually on camera it looks a little bit more uh, colorful than it looks in real life in real life it looks a little bit more dull but we'll see how it looks like um, when I do a swatch and also obviously when they oxidize they also look different then let's compare how the distress ink looks in this ink pad 
and then the distress excite here looks very different and i love this color i love this orange very very delicious it does look like pumpkin like a ripe pumpkin so this is the spiced marmalade okay and then let's move on to the worn lipstick get ready for this this is such a bubblegum beautiful color look at this i love it so that's um worn lipstick and here is the distress ink in worn lipstick so it looks very different and then finally the red one which is the fired brick it also looks a little bit um i think i will like it i think it looks like sort of terracotta kind of thing or what's it called like indian earth when it comes to watercolor is that the right pigment color so something like that but it it looks interesting i'm keen to see what these two look like uh, when you work with them because sometimes it's hard to tell okay so the the ones that came from america the lit sits a lot uh better than the ones that i have ordered here from uk which you can actually see that there is a bigger space there between the 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 thing and it sort of doesn't really you know just flies off the lid uh, but these sit much better which i prefer i think it also would keep the the ink last longer um, and i think it's something tim holes said in one of his um swatch videos that a lot of people were complaining uh, about how easy the lid would come off so they worked on it and they now created these lids that sit better but he still prefers the first one because he thought it would was easier to work with he didn't need to uh, you know put any effort into opening the lids they would just kind of fly off quicker but yeah so that's that and then let's move on to this book which i am so incredibly excited okay first of all let me explain that um so the artist's name is anna victoria calderon salderon Chalderon. I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing. I'm sure I am mispronouncing. But basically, I have uh, followed her on Instagram for years, quite literally years. And um, I, ever since I discovered her, I was just mesmerized by how beautiful her art is. And I have to say that the cover really doesn't demonstrate her skills. If you ask me, I would definitely choose a different color just because if you're not familiar with her art, looking at this cover, you might think, mm, I'm not sure I am into this sort of, you know, geometrical or this kind of pattern style. However, she is an amazingly talented um, artist. And because I knew her art from Instagram, I knew that I would get something really amazing in this book. So I... Um, I have been following her and looking through her art and just enjoying her illustrations, which are stunning. So there is this um, combination of whimsical and contemporary style in one. So she makes the whimsical art look very modern and contemporary. So it looks really fresh and it looks luscious and bright. The way she draws is, is beautiful. The way she makes compositions of certain flowers is stunning. So yeah, absolutely um, adore this artist. She is just super talented. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she is from Mexico and she is just a bundle of joy. Um, I find her really inspiring. And um, the other thing is I have asked her before on Instagram and uh, I was very happy when she responded because she has so many followers. Um, I asked her about how she keeps that her painting so vibrant and so gorgeous and she told me a little um, tip of hers is when she uses yes look at this in fact I think this should have been the cover isn't this just amazing I'll just bring it up a bit closer so you can look so she likes to use um, combine watercolors with um, these liquid watercolors which I will come back into uh, two in a second and the other thing is white ink is a big part of her illustration so 
And that's the other thing that I really like in her style is how she does the highlights, which makes them actually look so glossy and fresh and pretty. So she uses white ink um, with, I think, diluting it a little bit with water because in some cases you can see it's quite watery and, and sort of almost transparent. And um, in other cases, it's quite opaque like here. So she probably plays around with the uh, transparency. However, I have flipped through the entire book. So look at this here. So you can see the white ink she used here is a lot more opaque so that the pattern stands out and comes out a lot better. Um, so it's just stunning. Yes, I wasn't going to do a flip through because like I said, I'll do a flip through separately, but I just wanted to mention that um, the the white ink, I um, had a look in the book twice and I could not find the exact product that she uses. She says that she prefers white ink to, uh, I think, gouache, but... Um, and the bottle that's photographed, the label is turned. So I will make um, some research online and see what I can find. I think I might have an idea what it could be. Um, but yes, it's um, I, I really need to get that basically. I love that white um, style or the white um, addition to watercolor illustrations. And quickly before I do any major flip through I'll just quickly so in the chapter here the essential supplies where I'm just all over the place and um, in here she then basically gives uh, a basic breakdown of the things that she likes to use she does say that in terms of watercolor for pants she likes crema schminke senneli and windsor and newton she gives the cons and the pros for tube she likes holbein windsor and newton daniel smith and this is the trick here that she does is the liquid watercolors dr ph martins and i noticed she likes the radiant which are um, not light fast okay so there is the other dr ph martins which is the hydrous line um as opposed to radiant and they are a little bit opaque and they just don't look as great as the radiant the radiant are super intense very vibrant and transparent and so she mixes them now i'm not entirely sure how she does it because i'm, I'm sure it's it's her you know, um, little secret, whether she mixes them in with the watercolor or she makes it flow into the watercolor. Um, I'm not entirely sure what her um, technique is, but she does. And that's what she responded to me on Instagram, that she uses a combination of watercolors with the Dr. Peach Martins. So, um, yeah, very very interesting and then i could spot a couple of colors here which is the lavender by hwc and there is also a leaf green so i um of course always want to know what colors are used i think this is turner's red orange but i'm not entirely sure um yes yeah, so there isn't too much giveaway of exactly what colors there are in her palette and i can totally understand because then people would want to copy her art and you know this is why her art is standing out because she found a way to to make these colors work so you won't get the exact um, list of her colors but she does kind of give you a little giveaway of what she likes so she likes to work with monochrome schemes analogous schemes and complementary schemes and she explains the difference between those and also breakdown of different um color palettes and things like that also the, the on the page where was this so here she talks about the extra so again that's the white and the black ink which i told you about um so this this is what the ink looks like with the black pipette at the end um kind of looks like it could be one of the dr ph martin's ones so i'll have a look and then the gold ink and the paints that she uses as well there's the glitter metallic powders 
um, different markers and pens. Again, no, you know, brands or anything like that. You can guess what they are. Um, and then there is a ribbon twine, washi type sticker. So she just um, explains what she likes to add to her art. And that is as much as I will share today. It's a wonderful book, that's all I can say. And I wish she had a different cover. Just because there is so much, so much stunning work here. Okay, uh, I will also share the fact that she uh, has a chapter at the end that will help you to practice with your lettering okay <laughs> so as you can see i'm super excited to have a dive into this book and learn from her finally so yes thanks for watching and see you soon